Hello everyone. In this video, we are going to solve numericals on the methods which we have done to find the missing rainfall data. So let's start. So the first problem it says that in a catchment there are four rain gauge stations which are named as P, Q, R, and S. The normal annual precipitation values at these stations are given. That is 780 millimeters, then 850 millimeters, 920 and 980 millimeters, respectively, for these four stations. Now, these normal annual precipitations, these are the averaged values for the particular stations for the past 30 years data. Now, in the year 2021, let's say, the station Q, R and S, these three stations were operative, but the station P, that was not. Now, using the normal ratio method, we need to estimate the precipitation at station P for the year, that is 2021, considering that the Q, R and S, they have received the rainfall as of 2021 as 860, 930 and 1010 millimeters respectively. So the four stations are given that is P, Q, R and S. Now at P station we do not know the rainfall for the year 2021. So that is the station which is missing station. Now the normal rainfall for the station P that is 780 millimeters for the station Q that is 850 similarly for station R that is 920 and for S station that is 980 millimeters now the missing station is this P1 so that means this NX value will be is equal to 780 millimeters therefore the range that has to be decided because based upon that we will calculate the value of the missing precipitation that is based upon the method. So that is 780 plus minus 78. So from here if we calculate the range that comes out to be 702 to 858 millimeter that is the range now if we check then this q value that falls within that range but the values of the normal precipitation at r and s they are not following the range and because of which we will use the normal ratio method in this particular problem the method was already mentioned although we checked for that but usually that may be given or may not be so you have to first check the range now once we have got the range then we already know the precipitation at three of these stations so writing them down so the precipitation at q that is already given that is 860 millimeters precipitation at r that is given as 930 millimeters and precipitation at s station that is given as 1010 millimeters therefore the normal ratio method that is the px upon nx ratio that is the that is, is equal to the mean of the normal ratios at the other station so that is pq upon nq plus pr upon nr plus ps upon ns now we are having three rainfall stations so therefore it has to be divided by three now placing all the values here so this pq that is 860 millimeter while this nq that was 850 millimeters plus pr that is 930 millimeters while the normal rainfall that was 920 millimeters plus this PS is 1010 millimeters while the NS was 980 millimeters. 
and that is is equal to px divided by this nx value that was is equal to 780 millimeter now from here if we solve for the px value which is the precipitation at the first station that is p station so that value comes out to be equal to so that comes out to be equal to 793.84 millimeters so that can be roughly taken as 794 millimeters is the value of the rain that has been missed out by the rain gauge stations which was not able to record that data moving on to the next problem so this particular problem it says the annual rainfall at the station x that is the station which is problematic that has been tabulated and the average annual rainfall at other surrounding stations for the year 1952 to 1970 they have been tabulated as below so in the reverse chronological order these data has been recorded so from 1970 to 1952 so the annual rainfall for the years that has been given and other stations average rainfall in centimeter that has also been given now when we take the cumulative annual rainfall because we would be using the double mass curve technique so in the double mass curve technique we need to take the accumulated values that is the cumulative values of the rainfall for the first year the value which has been given that is only the cumulative value for the next year we would add up these two values and that will be written which is 57.9 for the next year the three values have to be added and corresponding to that we will get the data as 78.5 in this way we will move for the entire period that is 105.4 then in this way we will move ahead and I tell you the year in which the data will be changing up and that is 1960 so in this year the cumulative rainfall was 272.1 the next year that will be 300.5 for the next year this will be 349.8 in this way it will go Similarly for the other stations it has to be added up so for the first year it is 26.4 then 59.6 then it will be 82.7 then it will be 106.1 and in that way it will continue and corresponding to the year that we have been looking at the data will be equal to 301.8 for the next year it will be 320.2 for the next year it will be 356.3 and so on now what is the use of this data so when we plot the data so in the double mass curve technique what we are having these are the two axes on the first axis that is on the x axis we are having the data for the other stations so this is the cumulative data for the other stations let's say that is p other and on the y axis we are having the problematic stations so when we start from the zero and for the first year that is 1970 the data is obtained corresponding to the two values that is 28.4 and 26.4 similarly we will move ahead in this way so that means the line that we are getting that is somewhat like this up to the year that is problematic that is 1960 after that this line should have been like this only that is a straight line but the data refer to this line that means the data is indicating that the path of the line would be this one now to remove this error we are using the double mass curve technique that means we need to shift the line from the year of change to this dotted line to this blue colored line now for the entire p 
period beyond this 1960 we are having the same base because this length of the time that will not change that will remain the same only variation will be in the component of the y axis so let's say this is the corrected value and this is the actual value therefore correction factor for each reading that will be equal to the corrected value to the actual value and once we multiply all the values beyond 1960 by this ratio we would get the exact values that are corrected and if we plot them then we would get the correct straight line and that will make the data consistent that is how we get the values of the that is how we get the values of the rainfall consistent beyond 1960 so beyond 1960 this correction factor that c value that comes out to be 173 while this actual value of the slope that comes out to be 248 based upon this if we calculate this further that comes out to be 0.6976 so all the values in the table they have to be multiplied by this 0.6976 to indicate that there is certain inconsistency in the record so at the given station coming back to this data this was the problematic station x so corresponding to 1960 up to this point the data was correct beyond this that means for 1959 this 28.4 it has to be multiplied with 0.6976 factor and if we multiply that that will be 19.8 similarly for the next year it will be 34.2 or to be accurate that will be 34.4 then it will be 22.3 then 19.1 then if we multiply it that will be 22.5 then 30.5 then 27.1 and then lastly it will be 21.3 so this data has been corrected now using this data and the cumulative average rainfall data for the other stations if we plot the curve now then we would get the correct straight line now that completes all the problems based upon the missing rainfall data which gave rise to the two problems that is the discontinuous and inconsistent data we have done both the problems to solve these doubts now in the next video we will look at the certain arrangements in which the rain gauge network is considered and after that we will do a problem based upon that thank you